Assalamu alaikum boys and girls. Welcome to story time with me, Sophia. Today we will be continuing our series on the stories of the companions of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. These are the people who interacted with the Rasul and learned from him directly. Today we will be learning about the companion by the name of Abdullah ibn Umar. His story is beautiful as he was very close to the Rasul. One day at Shaitan, a city halfway between Medina and Uhud, the Muslim army of a thousand troops led by the Prophet, peace be upon him, stopped. By now, the sun had begun to set and the Prophet, peace be upon him, dismounted from his horse. He was fully dressed and prepared for battle. A turban was wound around his helmet. He wore a breastplate beneath which was covered in smaller metal rings or plates, which fastened with a leather sword belt. He had a big shield slung across his back and his sword hung from his side. He was ready, full of armor. As the sun set, Bilal called the Adhan and they all prayed Maghrib Salah. The Prophet wasallam, then reviewed his troops once more, looking over his army. And it was then that he noticed in the midst of all of the men, the presence of eight young boys who, despite their age, were hoping to take part in the battle. Young boys? They're ready for battle? A real life battle with swords and armor? Not a fake one on TV or video games. Are any of you boys and girls ready for battle? Do you think you're ready for war? I know many of you like to fight, but fighting at home and fighting war are two very different things. I know I'm not. Amongst these boys were Zayd's son, Usama, and Umar's son, Abdullah, both only 13 years old. Hmm, are any of you 13? Almost 13? The Prophet wasallam, ordered them all to return home immediately. Six went home, but two stayed. Unlike the rest, they proved that they were strong, able fighters and were allowed to accompany the army to the Battle of Uhud, while the others were sent back to their families. They were far too young. From an early age, Abdullah ibn Umar, one of the two boys, showed his keenness to be associated with the Prophet wasallam, in all of his undertakings. He was not afraid to defend his Rasul nor fight in his honor of Islam. He was strong in both physical and spiritual capacities. He had accepted Islam before he was 10 years old and he had made the hijrah with his father and his sister Hafsa, who was later to become a wife of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. For you sisters, her story is a great one. I'll have to tell you about soon. Before Uhud, he previously was turned away from the Battle of Badr, and it was not until the Battle of the Ditch that he and his young colleague Usama, both now 15 years old, and a few others of their age, were finally allowed to join the ranks of the men, not only for digging up the trench, but for actual fighting in battle itself. From the time of his hijra to the time of his death, more than 70 years later, Abdullah distinguished himself in the service of Islam. And he was regarded amongst the Muslims as the good one, the son of the good one, according to Abu Musa al-Ashari. He was known for his knowledge, his humility, his generosity, his piety, his truthfulness, and his incorruptibility in acts of ibadah. From his great and illustrious father, Umar, he learned a great deal and both he and his father had the benefit of learning from the greatest teacher of all, the Muhammad Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh, SubhanAllah. To learn from him directly, boys and girls, can you imagine? We're going to pause for a short commercial break, but when we get back, I'll tell you more of his story and the man that he grew up to be. Welcome back, boys and girls. We were just about to get into the story of Abdullah ibn Umar, one of the youngest boys to fight in the Prophet's army. He joined the army at the young age of 13 years old, 
he greatly admired and loved the Rasul. Abdullah would observe and scrutinize every single saying and action of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in all sorts of situations. And he would practice what he observed closely and with sincere devotion. This is how we all should learn from watching and observing our fathers, our mothers, our teachers, our imams, and all of the knowledgeable and respected people we want to grow up to be like. Don't forget, we should also follow all of the sunnahs of the Rasul. For example, one day, if Abdullah saw the Prophet wasallam performing salah in a particular place, he would later pray in the same exact place. If he saw the Prophet making supplication, dua, while standing, he would also make dua while standing. He would do exactly the same things. On a journey, if he saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, get down from his camel at a particular place and pray to Raqqa, he had any occasion to pass on the same route, he would do the exact same thing at the exact same place. Get down from his camel and pray to Raqqa. He wanted to follow the Rasul so closely, subhanAllah. He knew that the Rasul was the ultimate role model. There's not no superheroes. He didn't care about anyone magical like Batman or Superman. He knew the Rasul was the best one to follow. He admired the way he lived and he wanted to be just as close to Allah. In a particular place in Mecca, he once observed the Prophet's camel making two complete turns before he dismounted and prayed his two rakat. It might have been that the camel just did that involuntarily for no reason, but Abdullah did the same thing when he happened to be in the same place at another time. He made his camel complete two turns before making a deal and coming down. He then prayed two rakats in precisely the same manner as he had seen the Prophet do so. Sometimes he didn't even know why or how the Rasul did certain things, but he still did it nonetheless. You see, he wanted to be just like him, no matter what. He wasn't taking no risks to miss out on anything, any possible blessings from doing what the Prophet did. Now Aisha radiallahu anha noticed this deep and sincere devotion of Abdullah to the Prophet. And one day she remarked, there was no one who followed the footsteps of the Prophet. May Allah be pleased with him in the places where he alighted, as did Ibn Umar. In spite of his close observance of the Prophet's actions, however, Abdullah was extremely cautious, even afraid of reporting the sayings of the Prophet. He would only relate a hadith if he was completely sure that he remembered every single word of it. While he observed everything and copied everything himself, he knew the responsibilities that came with telling other people what to do or say. If in case he made any mistakes in relating the prophet's words or actions. You know, so many people today can learn from this. And he was such a young man to have such discipline and wisdom. So many people today speak and instruct others on what to do or how to live with little to no knowledge. They preach their opinions rather than giving proof from the Quran or Sunnah. Please, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, make sure your facts are 100% correct before you make the mistake to lead anyone or stray or hurt another. One of Abdullah's contemporaries said, amongst the companions of the Prophet, no one was more cautious about adding to or subtracting from the hadith of the Prophet than Abdullah ibn Umar. Similarly, he was extremely cautious and reluctant to make legal judgments, fatwas. Once someone came to him asking for a judgment on a particular matter, and Abdullah ibn Umar replied, I have no knowledge of what you ask. Now, the man only came to him because he knew that Abdullah was very, very smart, and he followed the Rasul so closely. But when he walked away, Abdullah clapped his hands in glee and said to himself, Phew! The son of Umar was asked about what he does not know and he said, I do not know. He knew that sometimes it's better to be humble and honest and just say you don't know rather than speak without truth and full knowledge. 
And because of this attitude, he was actually reluctant to become a Qadi, a judge in the Sharia courts, even though he was well qualified to be one. The position was one of the most important and esteemed offices in the Muslim society in the state, bringing with it honor, glory, and even riches. But he declined the position when it was offered to him by Uthman. His reason for doing was not that he underestimated the importance of the position, but because of his fear of committing errors and judgment in matters pertaining to Islam. That's how important it is to make sure that you have all of your facts right, especially when it comes to making judgment calls on behalf of other people or teaching and instructing other people. He did not want the responsibility of leading people astray. Take note, boys and girls. Uthman made him agree not to disclose his decision because it might influence many of the other companions of the Prophet who actually performed the duties of judges and consults. Abdullah ibn Umar was once described as the brother of the night. He would stay up at night performing salah, weeping and seeking Allah's forgiveness and reading Quran. To his sister Hafsa, the Prophet Wasallam's wife, the Prophet once said, What a blessed man is Abdullah. Should he perform salah at night, he would be blessed even more. And from that day on, Abdullah did not abandon his qiyam al -layl, whether at home or on journeys. If the Rasul himself could say he was blessed to pray all night, and so he would. In the stillness of the night, he would remember Allah perform salah and read the Qur'an and weep. He would make his sincere du'as. Like his father, tears came readily to his eyes, especially when he heard the warning verses of the Qur'an. Ubaid ibn Umar had related that one day he read these verses to Abdullah ibn Umar. How then will the sinners fear on Judgment Day when we shall bring forward witnesses from within every community and bring you, O Prophet, as witness against them? Those who were bent on denying the truth and paid no need to the apostle with all that day wish that the earth would swallow them. But they shall not be able to conceal from Allah anything that has happened. Surah An-Nisa. Abdullah cried, listening to these verses until his beard was soaked with tears. He knew the importance of the truth. Piety, simplicity, and generosity combined in Abdullah to make him a person who was highly esteemed by the companions and those who came after them. He must have been liked by the companions. After all, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam himself adored and admired him. He gave generously and did not mind parting with wealth, even if he himself would fall into poverty as a result. He was a successful and trustworthy trader throughout his life, not just in his knowledge of the hadith, but also in business. In addition to this, he had a generous stipend from the Bayt al-Mar, which he would often spend on the poor and those in need. Once it was accounted that he received 4,000 dirhams and a velvet blanket. The following day, Ayub saw him in the sukh, the marketplace, buying hay for his camel with credit. Ayub then went to Abdullah's family and asked, didn't Abu Abdurrahman, meaning Abdullah ibn Umar, get 4,000 dirhams and a blanket just yesterday? Yes, indeed, they replied. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where'd all this money go? But I saw him today in the sukh buying hay for his camel, and he said he had no money to pay for it. But they told him, before nightfall yesterday, the same day he got the money, he parted with it all. Then he took the blanket, threw it over his shoulder, and went out. When he returned, it wasn't with him either. We asked him about it, and he said that he had given it to the poor. They explained this story, and subhanAllah, he literally gave away all of his wealth and the clothing on his back without thinking twice. We should not be stingy, boys and girls. The most loved sahabas, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were those who gave the wealth and charity. Allah loves when we are generous and humble, right, boys and girls? 
Allah loves when we care for our brothers and sisters. Abdullah ibn Umar encouraged the feeding and the helping of the poor and the needy. Often when he ate, there were orphans and poor people sitting all around him. He would scold his own children for treating the rich and ignoring the poor. He once said to them, you invite the rich and forsake the poor. For Abdullah, well was a servant, not a master. It was a means toward attaining the necessities of life, not for acquiring luxuries. It was his and our responsibility to help those around him who were more in need. Once, one of his friends who came from Khorasan once bought him a fine, elegant piece of clothing. I have brought this soap for you, he said. It would certainly bring coolness to your eyes. I suggest that you take off that coarse clothes you have on and put on this beautiful thobe. Show it to me, said Abdullah. And on touching it, he said, is this silk? No, it's cotton, replied his friend. For a little while, Abdullah was pleased. Then with his right hand, he pushed away the thobe and he said, no, I am afraid for myself. I fear that it shall make me arrogant and boastful. And Allah does not love the arrogant boaster. We should all do what we can to make sure we are not arrogant nor boastful, boys and girls. Remember that Allah wants us to be humble. Material things do not make us better than anyone else. On another occasion, Maymun ibn Mahran related the following. I entered the house of Ibn Umar. I estimated everything in his house, including his bed, his blanket, his carpet, and everything else in it. What I found was not even a hundred dirhams worth. Now remember, he got 4,000 just before, but yet he only owned about a hundred dirhams worth of necessities. That was not because Abdullah ibn Umar was poor. Indeed, he was rich. Neither was it because he was a miser. Indeed, he was very generous and quite liberal. SubhanAllah. Remember, he had a very well-paying position, getting hundreds of dirhams on a regular basis. He was just not afraid with partying with his wealth because he knew the material things did not bring him close to Allah. He himself saw so closely after following the Rasul what did make him close to Allah. Charity and good deeds bring you closer to Allah. And once Allah is pleased with you, his rewards of Jannah are far greater than anything money can buy in this life. This is such a great lesson for us all with and without wealth, boys and girls. So we should all take lessons from today and we should all remember to follow the Rasul in what we do, the way we interact with people on a regular basis each and every day. Take it to heart. I hope you enjoyed today's story as much as I have. And I hope you learned something beneficial today, boys and girls. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow for more story time with me, Sophia. Assalamu alaikum.